We will look into tuning the hyperparameters of profit algorithm. Profit algorithm is one of the very simpler algorithm which we use for forecasting, but it's often one of the state of the art when it comes to the classical baselines. However, using profit directly is often challenging because it has many different components to catch, you know, for example, trends, seasonality, uh, and we can even customize many of these where it turn on and off. It is designed to handle time series data, such as daily observation, displays that display patterns and all. And it can be used out of box, for example, from pre Facebook profit or profit library, you can directly initiate the model, fit it on your data and make some future predictions. Uh, however, the biggest challenge here is that if you directly use it in this out of box fashion, we'll see the performance often suffers and how we can overcome it, how we can find the best parameters. We'll look into this video. I will be using profit library and R mango library, so you can easily install these libraries if you have not done so. And next, uh, let us lower the data set. This data set is a passenger data set, air passengers data set. It is a, a simple enough data set to experiment with many different parameters and ideas. You can easily replace this data set with your time series data set. It has month and number of passengers as we see here. In this data set, uh, there are only 144 rows. So it's a reasonably small size data set. We are going to use the last 40 values for testing purposes and the remaining values to train the model. If we directly kind of uh, see what the data looks like, you'll see here that this is a part of the data which we're going to train and the last part we're going to test it. This is more like a time-based split which we have done here. It's very widely used in forecasting uh, models. Further, uh, some logging and all has added. So there are many different parameters where the profit training will fail and we don't want to kind of get so many warnings when we try many, many different parameters. As a loss function, we are going to define a map a loss function. Uh, which is again very widely used in forecasting mean absolute percentage error. You can change this loss function with any of your definition. This is the one which we're going to find the best model here. First, let us train a profit model without any parameter tuning. We're going to give you the training data, making the future prediction based on the test data size, and let us look at what the future predictions are. You can also plot this prediction here, but we'll uh, plot them in the form of uh, actually a chart. Uh, but you can also look into the data frame, what it looks like and different components it returns. In this simple model, the error is kind of reasonable, not very bad, not very good. But when we plot it, we actually see what really is happening. So the test data ground truth is in blue color. We are only looking at the test data now, but the prediction are following similar trend to some extent, but we see that there's a gap which we want to bridge. Can we do any better here? That's where we want to tune the parameters. To tune the parameters, we again define an objective function for profit. This objective function takes a parameter and now create a model with those parameters. These parameters are passed in as a list. So we want to try many different sets of parameters. Uh, based on this trial, Mango will automatically find the best parameters, which we are going to use here. Mango is a Bayesian-based library, so it is much, much better than random search. Again, we will train the model, make the future predictions, and based on the predictions, we will also look into what is the error and we will uh, let the model know what is the error from these parameters and it will look into what are the best other parameters that you can try based on these errors. Eventually, when the model training fails, we return a very high loss or high error so that we don't want to enter into these regions where the model could not train. The parameter space which you see here is very large. Actually, this is the parameter space which we are searching for profit. Like you see here, there's a change point, growth, seasonality, weekly, daily, which you want to turn on and off, different seasonality modes, priors and intervals and uncertainty samples even. So it's very hard to tune this manually. Let us use the state of the art library here. We are going to give it like 10 random initial points and 50 iterations to train. You can initialize the trainer or run it. This tuner is actually coming from the mango from the parameter spaces. This is going to find us the best possible values of the parameters. Uh, the results will take some time for the tuner to run. So I've already ran it. It takes a few minutes, but finally it will give us a, what is the best kind of values. Best loss is around six. And you will see that daily seasonality is not there. Linear growth happens in the data. What is the interval with seasonality mode, all those things it will automatically find for us. Now, when we train the best model uh, based on the parameters which we just found, let us look at how the best models look like. This was again our training data. 
here's the green thing are the default predictions which we saw earlier that they don't match directly with test that much. But the red predictions which you are the tuned model, you see here the tuned model actually matches with the test so well. This is the magic which happens when we are able to tune the parameters very nicely. Uh, this notebook will be available in the video description so you can try your own data set. Further, uh, I have also uh, made a blog post on this that how you can tune uh, profit uh, for your own data sets and dives deep into many of these issues which I was discussing. This notebook also links to the code uh, and so you can play it, but it also explains what is happening, what, what library we are using, what is hyperparameter search space and so on. I'll see you in uh, another video.